rather 80s-tastic AI phone intercom system installed in my apartment building. I don't own the building, uh, but uh, I do live there. And I wanted to modernize uh, answering the door a little bit. So uh, first I'm going to show you exactly what this phone system does. This is emulating, like, you know, my actual apartment building phone. I bought this stuff on eBay to make it a little bit easier. So this is what the handset looks like. And you take it off the hook. You can talk to people on it. Or you can buzz them in at the front door. That's basically about it. And also, when they push a button on the front door thing, there's a buzzer in here that rings. That's that's more or less all that happens. So uh, I can. So I have this pretty much totally emulated here. If I push this button, this is this. This is the same as this button right here. It actuates the door lock downstairs. If I uh, push the call button. You can hear that it buzzes my phone. And then also, if I pick up the handset, you might be able to hear through the front door speaker doodad that you can hear me talking to it like that. Yeah. So that's all it does. And um, the audio, audio is a party line system. And all units are wired in series except for the call buttons, which are wired directly to each apartment. So what that means is that Everybody in the building who has an off-the-hook handset can hear anybody at the door, but also can hear anybody in any other apartment if they also have an off-the-hook handset. You know, it's one of those sorts, sorts of deals. So I plan on getting hip surgery soon. I want to make it slightly more convenient to let somebody in and talk to them through the front panel. So I figured I'd try to do that through my mobile phone. Um, again, I don't own the building, so I couldn't really replace the system. Um, and I didn't really feel like springing for an entirely new system for everyone in the building. <laughs> so I managed to figure it out using the original hardware, but I'm kind of an electronics noob, so it took a little while to figure out. I had no idea how the system worked. I had to sort of reverse engineer. It was super inconvenient to use the actual apartment building intercom because I would have to go up and down the stairs, and people are actually using it while, it's, while I'm trying to develop this thing. So very late in the game, I bought off of eBay for, you know, very cheap. A uh, number of handsets in this front front door unit to just sort of have a, a thing to prototype it on. So um, you got really got to sort of admire the simplicity of this thing. I think they actually might even still sell this particular thing. That this thing's called a VCK unit, and this thing is called a VC10M, and it's called 10 because it has 10 apartment numbers on. They sell in smaller, smaller and bigger varieties. So I have a diagram here, um, basically. The, the handset is it sits on the wall. There's wiring from downstairs. And basically, you're supposed to connect number one to number one over here, number two to number two over here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you're supposed to connect B to the, to the call tune wire. And that's about as much information as they give you in, in the manual. You know, it's pretty much plug and play. So um, I didn't quite understand. You know, it, it did say it operated on 12 volts and, and whatever, but there's no detailed theory of operation of the thing. Um, right now this thing gets 12 volts from a bench power supply I have down here and let's see if I can very carefully flip this over. Um, these are the power terminals on the left hand side here. And then, uh, number one here is the input from the microphone of this thing. Number two here is the output from the microphone of this thing back to this thing. Number three is ground. And number four is the door release thing. And the, the solenoid is actually hooked up over here to these two L plus and minus buttons or terminals, but the, the door opening signal is number four. And then B is this call tone thing. So um, the solenoid bit is actually really pretty simple. Um, you know, basically... If if uh, number four and ground are shorted, uh, the solenoid will release. That's that's pretty much it. Relay. This relay is worth, was worth like three bucks on Amazon or something. So it's connected to the Raspberry Pi, and I have a little web app that when I press a little button that says unlock the door, it will unlock the door. So um, the the harder bit of the system was the was the audio, which didn't. I really had to work hard. To, <laughs> to figure out 
I mean, it, it turned out to be really simple, but I was foiled by the fact that I was trying to use the apartment system and people were picking up the phone and I was getting strange measurements and I didn't really know how it worked. But at the end of the day, it's the, both the input and the output signals are basically aux level. I think they're like 40, 40 millivolts peak to peak, which plugs right into a USB sound card, which is super simple. So I have a USB sound card here, and this is sort of wired up to the two and three terminals here. I'm sorry, the one and two terminals here, plus ground to uh, complete complete that circuit. And the only fly in the ointment there is that in order for the audio circuits to work at all, the phone has to be off the hook. So it would be as if I would have to leave it, leave the phone off the hook all, all the time. Now, of course, I didn't want to do that because I don't want the microphone transmitting what I'm doing in the apartment at all times, et cetera, et cetera. So it was easy enough just to buy another handset, take its guts out, and um, you know it's naturally off the hook when it's not when it's not in uh, in its plastic casing. So that's what I'm going to do. I could do something probably a lot you know simpler. Uh, if I understood the schematics, which I do have, but I don't, I don't understand schematics that well. And this, this is pretty easy, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put this um, basically in series with my existing thing, and it will permanently stay off the hook, and that will allow the the audio voltage uh, circuits to be completed. So, um, uh, to reverse engineer it, I used an oscilloscope and a multimeter. Um, I'm not going to bother showing you that. It's not all interesting, <laughs> but uh, it took it took some time to to, to figure it out. Uh, for the longest time, I didn't didn't realize I had to. Um, I had to the thing had to be off the hook, <laughs> which was which was really funny. And also, I I was I'm as I said I'm kind of electronics noob, so uh, I wasn't real confident in my measurements. I was using a really cheap oscilloscope, which was like thirty dollars on. Amazon and I thought it might be fooling me and anyway it was it just it was very embarrassing but anyway I did find out that both the input and output signals are very very standard analog signals that you can feed right into a USB sound card when I did figure that out uh, I was still getting really choppy audio on on the the phone when I when I would uh, use the phone to try to talk to the front panel and I was using a Raspberry Pi Zero at the time, and it just it turns out it just wasn't powerful enough. I, for for a while, I thought it was like, uh, like I needed a, a voltage divider on the on the on the audio circuitry because it was just overloading the circuits or something. I was I was just clueless, um, but I but I did figure it out. I just I just on a hunch, I just put the Raspberry Pi Four in, and it worked fine. So. Uh, that's about it for the hardware. And again, I just have a Raspberry Pi hooked up. It's hooked up through GPIO to a relay that controls the solenoid. And then it's hooked up to a USB sound card. This happens to be one of those pluggable sound cards, but um, there are other ones. You'll see these a lot on Amazon. Uh, they work perfectly well as well. They're like $6. It's fun. Um, and uh, this, then the... There's a couple microphone jacks that I've hacked together to hook up to the terminals, that, the appropriate terminals on the on the VCM. They're actually hooked up to the VCM directly now. Of course, they'd be hooked up in, in my apartment to the to the actual wiring that comes from here in the in the series of you know of stuff that comes into the apartment. So this is this is only a test, just an emulation. Well, here's the app in all its glory. Uh, it's got authentication. It's got a picture of a door, which I think is a nice touch. But uh, I'll show you the details of the of the application itself in a second. I'm just going to show you what how it works and what it does. Uh, let me log in first. Stand by. So all you miscreants are going to try to steal my password. Okay. Now you can see that we have this wonderful interface here, and we can do three things. Well, two things. Well, three things. We can buzz the front door. And that keeps this solenoid open for 10 seconds. And if you try to do it again, while it's, while it's open, it, it ignores you. 
doesn't continually flutter the lock. And if that wasn't enough, you're not impressed by that. Then you can talk to the front door. Sometimes this gets a little bit finicky. Sometimes I have to press it several times for it to work. Go. Okay. Now I am talking. Oh, I'm echoing now. Talking from the front door through this panel here. Now from here. Here, the sound is from the sound panel. If I just want to hang up, I can. And that's it. That's that's its entire operation. Um, it requires a mess of software to do that, but I will show you that shortly. Well, here's a little um, diagram I made of the hardware involved in the intercom hack. Uh, here is the VC10M front panel. Here is my handset terminals that are in my apartment. We have the Raspberry Pi over here, a USB sound card. Um, and I'm just going to try to explain how the Raspberry Pi is, is hooked up to the, to the handset terminals at this point. So uh, we're using GPIO, and I'm using pin 18 as the, as the pin to signal that I want the, the relay to act, actuate. So that goes into the in of the relay here. I have ground uh, on the Raspberry Pi going to DC minus on the relay. And I have five volts from the Raspberry Pi coming in DC plus. And then on the other side of the relay, we have um, the the common terminal that goes to ground on the VCK handset terminal. And then we have the normally open terminal going to number four, which is the door release thing. So when the when the relay is is actuated, uh, that closes uh, the circuit that causes this door unlock solenoid to to go in, in reality we're not talking to the solenoid directly there's there's some hardware inside of this vc10m that actually just monitors whether this these two pins are shorted and if they are it actuates the solenoid so yeah so also we have a usb sound card and it has two three and a half millimeter jacks on it and i have these um tiny little lead wire things uh that i've uh, stripped and connected to the VCK handset terminals. And I've shorted red and white together just to get mono for both because there's no point in stereo. It doesn't have stereo. So um, the uh, ground pin uh, of, the, of, the, of the mic cable goes to ground and the white and red, you know, the actual uh, audio signals go to number two for the mic. Uh, so same for the ground of the line out of the USB sound cards goes to ground here. And then the white and red shorted uh, audio signal goes to number one here. And that's all of it, I think. Well, it's time to start talking about software, which means it's time to start drinking. Hold on. Oh, smooth. Um, so, uh, this system, uh, runs on actually two hosts. Uh, one is the Raspberry Pi that is in my apartment that's hooked up to my, my uh, intercom system, as we've seen. Uh, the, the other one is a internet host that I have out, out on the internet. And the third, third one is the, you know, mobile phone or whoever is trying to actually unlock the door or talk to the front door or whatever. But uh, this is a fairly complicated setup. It uses a protocol named WebRTC to do the voice communications. The, the unlock bit is very simple. It, it wouldn't need to be this complicated if it was just, it was just the unlock. But um, when I originally started out, I was running this Raspberry Pi. It was a Pi Zero. And a Pi Zero, it definitely doesn't have enough power to do the voice comps at all. <laughs> The way I engineered it was I wanted to just use the Pi Zero over here, have it do the least amount possible, and then the this, this host over here would handle all the web appy stuff that, that the mobile phone talks to. Um, at this point, that might be overkill, and if I were to do it again, I might put it all on the Raspberry Pi and then have a dy dynamic DNS happening. Now that I have a Pi 4, it's probably fine to put it all on there. 
but in any case, this is what I ended up with. And, uh, the, the other reason for this was that I thought that I was going to be able to use my mobile phone when I was, when the, when the mobile phone wasn't connected to my LAN, that turns out to be untrue due to a bug in, in, in some software that I'm using. I think it's a bug or maybe it's just a missing feature. Uh, not sure. And I decided, well, it's fine. I'm, I'm going to be in the apartment anyway. When I want to talk to somebody at the door and unlock the door and everything, it's, I don't, I don't really care that, that much. So in any case, this is probably, uh, not the best, not the most, uh, not the simplest solution here. And I could probably consolidate all this into the pie, but this is the way it is now. So when the mobile phone, or it, it really doesn't matter whether it's mobile phone or not, it could be a tablet or browser or whatever, as long as it's running Chrome, um, yeah, for whatever reason, Firefox doesn't, doesn't work, uh, the, the, at least for voice communications here. Uh, it sends an HTTP re web request to the, to the internet host, which is running a web application and the web application is written in Python. It, uh, and there's also Apache fronting for the web application, uh, so that I can get HTTPS uh, because, um, you don't want to be transferring passwords and stuff over the clear. Um, and also with what I'll talk about in a second, uh, the web sockets protocol requires HTTPS. So, so Apache runs on this, on this internet host, and it also runs the Python web app. It also runs this door server script, which, uh, is another, um, uh, server that, um, is a WebSocket server and the mobile phone talks to the web app and then the web app sort of mediates, uh, the connection between the mobile phone itself and the door server. So it says, Hey, you know, I, I want to log in. That's handled entirely by the web app, the login stuff. And then if you want to unlock the door or start a voice communications, it says to the mobile phone, Hey, go talk to the, to the, to this other door server application here. Don't talk to me. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> uh, and the door server is also is, is a server. It's a web, uh, web socket server. It is also, um, proxy behind Apache HPS so that, because web sockets don't work unless you do that. So anyway, hold on a second. I gotta take another drink. Whew. All right. So when you make, when your mobile phone finally begins to talk to the door server application, it says, Hey, I want to make an unlock request. I want to unlock the door and the door server server application, um, lets the raspberry Pi know that an unlock request was made. It doesn't send a request to the raspberry Pi door, this, this thing, uh, the raspberry Pi is always connected to it. The raspberry Pi connects to the door server. So it's, it's running the door client thing. And the, this, this communications path, this WebSockets communications path is, is bi-directional. So when the door server, uh, gets a request, um, it says, Hey, is the door client connected? If so, I'm going to send it a, a, a message and please unlock the door. And there's a bunch of really gnarly, um, authentication and or security stuff involved in, in the software in there. But that's the, that's the basic idea. When the mobile phone says, I want to go talk to the front panel of the door, something slightly different happens. It, it goes through that same procedure. It says, I'm going to, the door server says, Hey, door client, are you connected? I have a voice communications request. And what happens over here on the door client is that it runs my, my the, the, a bit of Python code is, is running the WebSocket stuff, but it in turn invokes a bit of Go code called web RTC CLI that, um, accepts the request, the offer from the mobile phone and returns an answer through the door server app back to the mobile phone. And then these two talk directly after that, the, the door server is no longer involved in that thing. And the web RTC is super complicated and should allow me to, you know, roam on my mobile phone, wherever I am, you know, this thing's behind a NAT and it's got all kinds of options to it. But, um, in this case, it's the simplest possible thing. It just says, Hey, okay. Um, you want to make, you want to talk to the, to the, uh, 
to this at this point that that thing's a WebRTC client or peer. You want to talk to this WebRTC peer? Go ahead. And they these, these two make a connection directly. And then when you know the speaker and mic stuff is irrelevant, you know, sort of, you could it could as easily have a speakerphone connected to it, but it happens to be connected to this BC 10M thing. <sighs> I think. If you sense a, a bit of stress in my voice, it's because I really, it's software, it's software. It's really complicated. We, we talked a little bit about the, the door client that runs on the Pi. One of its main jobs is to invoke this WebRTC CLI program, which is a, as its name implies, a CLI program that uh, implements the WebRTC protocol. And it probably is Linux only, it, at least it requires Pulse Audio. Um, and, uh, but it works fine on the Pi and it helps my mobile phone talk to my Pi when, as necessary. But, um, I wanted to show you it, a demo of it sort of in, in the raw, because really all my program does is invoke it so, so that, the, so that my mobile phone can talk to the Pi. So WebRTC is, uh, the protocol, uh, is composed of offers and answers. So, this browser right here, which is Chrome over here, uh, it is willing to talk to someone who gives it a, an answer to this offer. So um, this it says, hey, if, if somebody wants to talk to me, here's my information. And uh, if I invoke WebRTC CLI on the same host here, I can paste in that offer to it and then I press control D in order to signify that I'm done and it actually sent back an answer I can paste the answer in over here copy that paste it in over here start there we go and now I can hear myself echoing my head my headphones you probably can't hear that but we have a uh, two-way communication between WebRTC CLI and the browser, and that's how that works. So this is the software, this is the repository for the software that I wrote, it's called, for lack of a better name, Break On Through. I, I think I was listening to Doors when I, when I wrote it. <laughs> um, but it is, this software is installed both on the Pi and on the internet host that I have, although the Pi and the internet host, host use different portions of it, it's a it's a Python package and it's it's installed in the same way. So I have a, a, a bit of a readme down here. If you're gonna try this yourself, it's a little rough. I'm not gonna lie, uh, but you could give it a shot. I, I have some basic instructions here how to install it on the Pi and on the internet host and whatever. I think the, probably the hardest thing you're gonna need to overcome is the Apache proxying, which I don't have instructions for there. But it's there, and you can give it a shot with your own intercom system, with your own 80s-tastic intercom system. Uh, and at least you can take a look at it and maybe get some ideas from the code in there. Um, I'm happy to ask it, or answer any questions you got if you leave me a comment. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the limitations of the, of the thing. I, I talked before about the fact that my mobile phone has to be on the LAN that I'm on now, which is not ideal. But whatever that that's that's something that i i think i would have to disuse webrtc cli and, and use something like janus instead or some other cli program that does webrtc i couldn't find one if anybody knows one let me know um uh i have not messed around with capturing the door chime which would be kind of interesting you know maybe you could you could call me and put me in touch with whoever whoever uh rang the doorbell that would be good um, Chrome, I think the fact that Chrome is it, the only browser that works, uh, with WebRTC CLI is Chrome. I think that would probably be fixed by using something else as well. Um, there's some echoing, uh, when I talk to the front door, even when I'm not near the front door speaker, there's still some echoing because of the latency of WebRTC. The, the door panel speaker feeds back into the door panel microphone. And I hear myself, you know, maybe half a second later. Pulse Audio has some echo cancellation stuff that I can't quite make work, um, but I'm, I'm going to continue to maybe work on that. It would also probably be better to only complete the voice circuitry uh, circuits, the voice 
circuits, the the mic out and mic and and speaker in stuff. Uh, if the door chime rang instead of leaving it off the hook all the time, where I have this this off the hook thing just sort of hanging there, and I'm not sure it's going to cause a problem because there's no sound coming out of the of the pie um, when someone else picks someone else in the apartment picks up their handset, but you know, it's, it's what it is. Um, I, I've, I've also implemented a wave player, which I'm going to, uh, maybe send some choice samples out the door every so often, which is, which will be funny anyway. Um, and sometimes the software is a little finicky. Sometimes I do have to click that talk to front door multiple times. I haven't really tracked that down, but in any case, leave a comment. Uh, hope you liked it. If, if you do something similar, please let me know. Uh, or if you have some suggestions, I would be happy to hear them. All right. Anyway, thank you.